solve problem on balancing of radial engines for four cylinder by using direct crank and reverse crank method given question how maximum primary unbalance can be found in a radial engine having four cylinders also show that secondary forces are balanced use method of direct and reverse cranks This is the question for four cylinder radial engines and we have to find out primary unbalanced forces as well as secondary unbalanced forces by using the method of direct crank as well as reverse crank let us first complete the diagram now we know that in case of radial engines all the cylinders are connected to the common crank we will first place all the four cylinders at equal distance apart so we will place all the cylinders at an interval of 90 degree now we will give the number this is the cylinder number 1 this is the cylinder number 2 3 and 4 now this is the crank oc now we have to connect the middle point of this cylinders or we can say this is piston cylinder arrangement to the common point c so i will join all these points to the crank pin c now we have to use the method of direct crank and reverse crank now we will consider this crank oc rotate in clockwise direction so i will show the direction for the angular velocity omega in clockwise direction so in case of direct crank method we have to use angles that are rotating in clockwise direction and in case of reverse crank method we have to take opposite direction that is anti clockwise direction now we will consider the cylinder one is at 0 degree then what is the angle in between 1 and 2 that is 90 degree now here in direct crank method crank oc rotate in clockwise direction so 0 plus 90 plus 90 that is 180 degree and for this cylinder number 4 it is 180 plus 90 that is 270 degree so these are the angles that we have to use in direct crank method now to calculate primary unbalanced forces as well as secondary unbalanced forces we will prepare one table in the first column we have to mention the number of cylinders so here four number of cylinders we will mention here then next column we have to prepare for the primary crank position theta and next column secondary crank position that is 2 theta now how to complete this primary crank position theta so we have to take the reference of this diagram now there are two methods that is the direct crank as well as reverse crank so we have to prepare two column that is direct crank and reverse crank now we know the angles for the direct crank so here i have mentioned the angles in the direction of the rotation of this crank so for cylinder one it is 0 degree For two, it is ninety degree. Three, it is one eighty degree, and four, it is two seventy degree. Now, for the reverse crank, we have to just reverse this direction of rotation. So, if we use for this clockwise direction positive sign, then for anti-clockwise direction, we will use the negative sign. So, for cylinder number one, we will take zero degree. for cylinder number 2 so rotation is anti clockwise so we will write here minus 90 degree minus 180 degree for cylinder 3 and for cylinder 4 minus 270 degree now how to complete the column for secondary crank position 2 theta so for that we have to take the reference of previous column we have to just multiply with 2 so for direct crank we have to refer primary crank position for the direct crank column so here is 0 degree then 
90 into 2 that is 180 degree here 360 degree and here 270 into 2 that is 540 degree now for reverse crank we have to use the previous reverse crank and we have to just multiply with 2 so here is 0 degree minus 180 degree minus Uh, 360 degree and minus 540 degree so this table is getting completed now we will first calculate primary unbalanced forces and for this primary unbalanced forces we will draw two diagrams direct crank position by taking the reference of this second column and then reverse crank position by taking the reference for this third column now we will take the reference of this diagram and we will give the numbers. So here this is the line of stroke for the cylinder 1. So I will give here the number 1. Then this is the line of stroke for cylinder 2. This is 3 and this is line of stroke for cylinder 4. In the same way we have to use here the same numbers for reverse crank position. Now we know that in direct crank position, that is the direction is clockwise. So we have to show this. That is the clockwise direction for omega. And for the reverse crank position, direction is anti-clockwise and we have to show the direction of omega. Now we will first complete this. For cylinder 1, both are at 0 degree. That is for direct crank as well as reverse crank. Now we will place here the mass m by 2 at each cylinder. So this is important point. That is we have to place mass m by 2 at each cylinder. Now here this cylinder 1 is at 0 degree. So we will show this cylinder 1 here. At 0 degree for direct crank and reverse crank. So here is m by 2. And for the reverse crank also it is m by 2. Now next cylinder 2. Now cylinder 2 is rotated through 90 degree for direct crank. So when it is rotated through 90 degree then for the direct crank this rotation is in clockwise direction. So I will show this rotation. So this is the line of stroke for cylinder 2. Here is 90 degree rotation and this is the final position after rotation. So I will show here for 2, here is the mass M placed and which is equal to M by 2. Then in the same way for this 2, for the reverse crank method 90 degree rotation but in anti-clockwise direction. So I have to show this. Here is the 90 degree rotation in anti-clockwise direction and final position is at cylinder 1. So again we have to show here mass m by 2. So I will add here mass m by 2. Now next cylinder 3. 3 is rotated through 180 degree but in clockwise direction. So I have to show here. So this is the position of cylinder 3 and it is rotated through 180 degree. So I will show here. In clockwise direction, so in clockwise direction here 180 degree rotation is getting completed and here is the position. So I will add here M by 2. Now for cylinder 3 it is rotated 180 degree but in anti-clockwise direction. So we have to show this. So I will show here. This is the position. And now it is rotated in anti-clockwise direction and it is 180 degree. So we have to show here. This is 180 degree. So after rotation this mass M by 2 is placed at the, this position. Now we will move for cylinder 4. It is rotated 270 degree. Now for cylinder 4 it is rotated 270 degree in clockwise direction. So how to complete this? So here initial position of 4. So this 90 plus 90 plus 90 that is 270. And it is clockwise direction. So here this 270 degree rotation is completed and I will add the mass m by 2. 
Now in the same way, cylinder 4 is rotated to 70 degree but in anti-clockwise direction. So here this is the initial position. Now 90 plus 90 plus 90. So we have to show rotation in this way. And this 270 degree is completed. So at this point. So again I have to add here mass M by 2. So I will add here mass m by 2. So I will write here this is at 270 degree. Now if we observe these two diagrams. Now how to uh, check this uh, that is this uh, direct crank position is balanced or not and this reverse crank position is balanced or not. Now after rotation if we observe direct crank position both the cylinders that is both cylinders are placed at 1 and both cylinders are placed at position 3 and both are opposite to each other. So we can say that this direct crank position is getting balanced. But what happens for this reverse crank position? All the cylinders are gathered at this point 1 and that's why we can say that reverse crank position is unbalanced. So we have to find out the primary unbalanced forces because primary crank position. These two diagrams are for primary crank position. So how to find out the primary unbalanced forces? So we have formula that is mR omega square. So here we have to add all these masses. So Fp is equal to m by 2 plus m by 2 plus m by 2 plus m by 2 bracket complete r omega square r that is the crank radius r and here the omega that is the angular velocity of the crank so if we observe here is 4 m by 2 r omega square so again if uh, we uh, simplify this then we will get the answer 2 m r omega square so this is the primary unbalanced force for the four cylinder radial engines now we will move to calculate secondary unbalanced forces by using direct crank and reverse crank method and for that we will refer the column for secondary crank position, direct crank and reverse crank. Now with reference to this diagram we will first give numbers to the line of strokes for the cylinder. So this line of stroke for cylinder number 1. So we have to give here the numbers for both the direct crank position and reverse crank position. Then this is 2, then here is 3. And here it's 4. Now first we will take the cylinder number 1. So cylinder 1 is at 0 degree. So we have to show here the cylinder 1 is at 0 degree. So I will refer here the circle. And we will place the mass m by 2. So I will show here the mass m by 2 at cylinder 1. Then we will move to cylinder 2. Now this is the initial position of cylinder 2 for direct crank and reverse crank. Now we will show the direction also. So direction of omega is clockwise for direct crank and it is anti-clockwise for the reverse crank. Now it is rotated 180 degree for direct crank. So we have to show rotation in clockwise direction. So this is 2, initial position of 2 and in clockwise direction we will move for 180 degree. And this is the final position. So we will show here the cylinder with mass m by 2. Now in the same way it is minus 180 degree for this reverse crank. So this is the initial position and we will move 180 degree in anti-clockwise direction. So here is 180 degree and here is the final position and we will show this with mass m by 2. Now we will move to cylinder 3. Rotation is 360 degree for direct crank. So this rotation is taking place in clockwise direction. So this is the initial position. 
Now 360 degree that means one complete rotation. So here we have to show this. So this rotation is 360 degree and this is the final position. So we will show here the cylinder 3 with mass m by 2. Now in the same way it is minus 360 degree that means rotation is in anti-clockwise direction. So here is the initial position and here is rotation 360 degree is getting completed. And now we will show here the cylinder 3 with mass m by 2. Now we will move to cylinder 4. So for cylinder 4 rotation is 540 degree. So here for uh, we have to move for direct crank position. So where is the initial position for cylinder 4 is here. So how to complete this. So I will complete this one rotation with 360 degree and then we have to again complete 180 degree rotation then 360 and this 180 so here is the final position so this is total rotation is 540 degree and I will show here mass m by 2. So this is rotation is in clockwise direction. Now here minus 540 that means rotation is taking place in anti-clockwise direction. So here cylinder 4. So this is the initial position of cylinder 4. So I will complete with 360 degree first. That is one complete rotation. And then we will move to 180 degree. So 360 plus 180. So this total rotation is 540 degree and here is the final position. So I will show this with mass m by 2. Now if we observe these two diagrams for the secondary forces, then all these cylinders are placed at equal distance apart and which are opposite to each other. So we can say that direct crank position as well as reverse crank position is balanced. So we can say that for the four cylinders, radial engines, the secondary forces are balanced.